Welcome to the most awesome YouTube video that we've ever published on this channel. That's setting some high expectations. Basically, we're replacing our 1970s doorbell with a video doorbell. We might see some dogs. We might see a stuffed dog. So, we want a blue doorbell that's uh, blue iris compatible. It can work without the cloud. We don't want to pay any subscription fees. We want to use our existing wiring, and we want it to be hackable. Hackable. We know just customizable. Let's go over what's in the box. It was several. Camera? Yeah, there's the main camera. But look at all these things. I want to change it to silver. We can do that. You know why? Because it comes with three plates. You got the black plate, the silver plate, and that gray plate. Uh, that's the main camera unit. You got the plates. You got some different mounting options at the back. If you want to angle it to one way or the other, and you got you know a couple of drill bits over there, a little screwdriver if you don't have any tools. Uh, if you don't have any tools, I wouldn't attempt this. And then uh, you've got some screws and some electronic components. So how does this work? Well, a doorbell has a bunch of different components that are all wired up in your house. I don't know why they do it this way. This is just how ours works. But anyway, so you got a transformer, which transforms the voltage coming in off your outlet from 120 volts to a lower voltage. And then you got a chime and a switch. The switch basically prevents current from flowing through the circuit unless you press it. When you press it, current flows through the circuit, through the bell, and the bell rings. Ding then, dong. Yes, exactly. And then when you release the switch, it breaks the circuit and it stops ringing. So what we do is we replace the doorbell switch with this new unit. The uh, new doorbell lets a little bit of current go through, not, not, a, not the full current, but just a little bit, and it draws from that current to power itself. And we need a new transformer. Yeah, yeah, we did need a new transformer. It powers itself and uses that power to transmit a video stream to the Wi-Fi signal, which then also registers with the app and Blue Iris. Have we put it in yet? We, yeah, I put it in. I put it in last night. When it's to, when you actually press the bell, it also somehow increases the current going through that wire and allows your existing doorbell to ring. So yeah, and I guess it's got a little battery or capacitor or something so that it doesn't turn off when it shorts those wires going through it. So it's kind of a hack in the way that it works, but it works. Anyway, so let's install this thing. We only got uh, uh, an inch of space due to that storm door, even though the doorbell is, you know, about two inches. So I had to get some thin pieces of wood and, and tack it behind there. Goodbye, the, old doorbell. I may, I may put it in my box with the old doorbell. Okay. Anyway, the old doorbell was just a simple switch. So we got that out of there. They give you a, a one of the, those different plates. You mark it. There's a little bubble level that snaps in there, and you snap it out before you... Uh, drill it in there. So there it is drilled in and then you uh, attach the wires to the two screws on the back and then uh, when you pop off that front cover you uh, see the QR code down there that we're going to use. Why are you blanking it out? Because I don't want people to see our QR code. Hey, look, a puppy. Yeah. Anyway, the inside installation involves this little box which I guess helps it know when to power up the doorbell or tap power or something. So you go into your where your door chime is. The cover on ours just came right off. You basically just tap that box onto the existing uh, wires of course, we painted the wall, so we ripped the sheet uh, paint off the sheetrock. So we go back and fix that. But anyway, there's the box in there. It does have some adhesive tape on the bottom. You can attach it to the side of the transformer. We hadn't done that yet. So then we just power it up and see what happens. App for device Wi-Fi configuration. What app? What did it say? It said use app for Wi-Fi configuration. <laughs> it's green. It's blue. makes a noise there. Did it still ring the... So at this point, requested Wi-Fi configuration and, and it works as a basic doorbell, but it didn't ring the old mechanical doorbell yet. We'll find out why in a minute. Next, we installed the app. And this is an example of installing it on Android. You know, it's an RCA camera and it, the app is from Vox International. And we'll find out later there's the camera is even rebranded. So you're already dealing with a couple of companies. And anyway, you've got to re register for an account. You register, you register your account and then... Uh, it sends you a verification thing from yet another domain, Guarding Vision. So, you know, you got all these different... Why do you blank it out with your phone? Because I don't want people to see my email address. Anyway, mm -hmm. let app always run in the background. Allow it to access your Dad, phone, they, your they DNA, can, all that do stuff. Do you know if you go to the About section? What's actually happening is the doorbell itself creates a Wi-Fi network, and then the phone connects to it and then tells it your Wi-Fi password is, is kind of what's happening in the background, I think. Anyway, once you're in... Then you also have to tell it that um, you have a mechanical doorbell. It says, hey, you, you will need to add white box, icon white box. Obviously, that was translated from some other language. This didn't work initially. It was because my transformer wasn't powerful enough. So it eventually got everything working with Dad, the app. this mo morning when I went to um, Juju's granddaddy, yeah. um, you... it, start it beeped at us. Okay. Yeah, that beep was probably a uh, sort of like detecting... 
uh, there's like a motion detector feature or something like somebody comes in. I hadn't figured out all the features yet. Anyway, once we went through all that stuff, it worked. And, and it's 360. Well, it's not really 360. It's just sort of zooming in on this image. So uh, it was pretty easy to install it and getting, get it set up in the app. And yeah, they're zooming around. But now let's look at Blue Iris. This um, Blue Iris configuration doesn't appear to be uh, supported, but you know I really like Blue Iris. That's why I got this. So first thing I did was I went to my router and I made sure that this camera would always get the same IP address. Just basically just add a static mapping. And then I went into Blue Iris and just you know keyed in a new camera. And really all I had to do in Blue Iris, I didn't have to do anything really special. I had to get the password, which is underneath the plate, underneath the QR code. You have to key that in. Anyway, then you just uh, key in, uh, hit the find inspect button and, it, and the camera works. Now it does have RCA in the corner, which is weird. And it's got this clock on there. I, uh, I was able to eliminate the clock, but not the RCA, although I could probably zoom in and it's kind of out of the picture. Uh, another thing you can do is you can use the Hike Vision IVMS 4200 app. There's a couple of different versions. I think I had to use version three. There is all sorts of other stuff you can configure with this camera. You work through that RCA app and you're very limited, but for advanced users, as of right now, you can get in here and configure a lot of stuff. And I need to figure out how to block firmware upgrades so they can't take this away from me. But this camera apparently has a lot of features. So here's some of the first sample images I got from this camera. Did you blink out your face? I will later. It's, it gets good uh, sound and, and picture. And it's, it's an unusual look for a camera. It's kind of more vertically... Uh, oriented, you know, you can see the packages down on the on the porch as as well as up and down, and, and it does record audio. You can talk pretty well. We'll we'll do a demo of that of talking through the app. Um, this is a blue iris capture. Anyway, and what's interesting, it kind of at dusk before the night vision kicks in, you can see it adjust when your face gets near there. It actually changes the light and adjusts pretty good when you bring that mask up and in. That's kind of cool. Let's look in a second. Let's look at the night vision. The night vision on this camera was actually pretty good. That's just a porch light. We don't want to show our faces, so that's why I'm wearing a mask. Okay. Now, one thing I was really impressed with was the detail in the night vision. When this thing switched over to night vision, that house across the street in the background is just really clear, uh, clearer so than in the day. And I suppose you could see somebody's face if they approach the camera in the middle of the night. You, you get some some sort of... There's also in the app, there's like a footage camera and a recording. Yeah, this does have an SD card and it does have uh, some other features in the app. Uh, but yeah, we hadn't explored. Let, maybe we'll take a look at those a little bit and uh, see how that works. 24 hours later. And just we thought everything was done, we had a problem. Uh, oh, it, we can rest. Oh, wait. No. Yeah, it just quit working. He's dead, Jim. Hmm. So yeah, we couldn't get the thing to boot up. We tried resetting. It appeared to be getting some power, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't completely boot. Boot. And, and I also it. touched it, and it was like heated up. The problem was the transformer. Went up in the attic and found that. Our old 1970s transformer that was powering the doorbell just was really hot. It was hot to the touch even after taking it out. I used a power brick and the doorbell worked, but then I went to Lowe's and I got this thing. I uh, used the uh, outer, I guess, 24 volt taps on this and that fixed the problem and let it start ringing the old mechanical doorbell. Watch out if you buy this. Check your transformer. You don't want it to overheat, burn your house down. Yeah, let's, this is a test of the two-way audio. The first test didn't go so well. So here's the second audio test and we tried a different phone and the next day and everything worked a ton better. You could hear voices a lot better this time. Okay, so I'm about a foot away from the phone just talking in a normal voice. Say testing one, two, three. 
Okay. So it's working a lot better this time. Say hello, testing one, two, three. Hello, testing one, two, three. So one of the problems we ran into is push notifications were not working on our Android phones, but we installed some other apps and they did work. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me and see me? Yep. Okay, that took about eight yep. seconds. Okay, bye bye. Negatives and positives. Yes. On the positive side, it's compatible with Blue Iris. The app works pretty well. You know, it works off network and uh, you can configure it, and it's pretty easy to get going. However, you got to worry about the, uh, you know, might have a transformer problem. Also, I can never get the audio. The audio in from the camera works everywhere. The audio out to the camera seems to only look work through the app. I couldn't get that to work with Blue Iris, but I'm going to keep trying. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the design is you've got the button at the bottom, then you've got this round thing in the middle, which looks like a button but isn't, so people may try to press that, and it's really just where the speaker and stuff is. But Well, anyway, there's a doorbell symbol, so they'll see. They'll see the sign, yeah, hopefully. Anyway, that's about it. What do you think about this doorbell? See, um, I like it. See you next time for another video. Okay. Please subscribe. Breaking news, I pooped in your yard.